we haven't filmed this is Ahmed Dunn of AhmedDunn.com today I'll have another episode of Gmail tips and tricks video and I'll talk about how to create a new Gmail account from scratch if this is your first time or a repeat visit thank you for your support on this channel I'm always trying new and different ideas if you're into thinking outside the box you may want to subscribe to this channel if you're looking for more Gmail tips and tricks videos there will be links in the description box below so I'm going to assume that you have never created a Gmail account and this is the first time you are creating a Gmail account so this is the video for you so the first thing you have to open up a browser and uh, you have to go to gmail.com so right now I have a Chrome browser and I'm doing uh, using incognito mode just to not to you know mess up with my own email and the website you're looking at ahmeddun.com uh, this is actually my own website so the first thing we'll do we'll go to gmail.com so let's type in gmail.com where the address bar is gmail.com and click on it so now you can see that you're greeted with a message that create an account and secure smart and easy way to use email so this is the gmail you know main page when you don't have any gmail account or you haven't logged into any, any uh, gmail so we're just going to you know create or click on the button where it says create an account so here let's say create an account and if you're looking to open up an email for work this is going to be this button but we are talking about personal email so we'll just you know click on here okay so now it's asking you a few personal questions so first name uh, so I'm just going to say that you know Jerry last name Bondon and username uh, this is going to be your username uh, what you'd like to you know uh, your email address to be so for example my own personal email has uh, my name attached to it uh, and uh, you can s choose anything you want as long as it's available so for example if you are trying my first email let's see if that is available so my first email email uh, and it's going to give you a message that this username is taken try another one so let's say if your name is Bill Smith or Jerry Bondon uh, you can just try using your real name but I don't think it's going to work uh, most likely it's not going to work because everything is taken so you can be like a little creative and say Jerry Bondon one you can add one or one two three but even you can see that you know these are all taken so you can add Jerry Bond Toronto let's see if that works even that's is taken let's add Canada even that one is taken so what we can do we can do Jerry Bond Jerry Bond on Toronto today okay so I have a feeling everything is taken so what I'm going to do I'll just you know uh, use this one what they're suggesting must my first email 533 so now you have an email address which is my first email 533 at gmail.com now uh, you need a password and it has to be eight or more characters with a mix of letter numbers and symbols symbols are signs like you know uh, for example at uh, it's not showing you uh, actually I can show you the password if you click here so these are like symbols number at so you have to choose one of these and then you're going to have a like you know email so what I can I can do I'll just uh, let's choose a password uh, my first my first and we'll add Jerry and then we'll add one at and then we'll add one because you have to have a number okay so this is going to be our password so when you're creating your own email do not show your password to anyone do not give your password to anyone just this is just to show you how to create an email that's why I'm showing to showing you this password but you know once we're done with our tutorial I'm just going to delete this email this is not going to work so that's the reason I'm showing you so when you're creating your own email do not share show or give out your password to anyone so we're just going to type in the same password right here so my first Jerry 
at one. So I'm just going to copy this pass password and you know open up a notepad just to you know uh, write it down because I don't want to you know forget this. So I'll just you know leave it on my notepad. Now what we you have to do so you're going to click next and it's just creating your uh, you know gmail email now you have to verify your phone number so the thing is it's going to send you a text message and you have to verify your phone number and i don't see any other option except a phone number so you have no choice but giving it a phone number so what's going to happen here that I'm going to give my phone number but I'm block that I'll block that so you know it doesn't go public so I'll just enter my phone number uh, just to, for verification purposes it might block me because I have already other emails with my phone number but let's see what happens so I'm just going to enter my phone number next Okay, so the phone number works and Google sent me a message and I have to just enter that message here. So whenever you're entering your phone number, you're going to get a text message and you have to, you know, get that verification code from your phone number and you have to put it in here. So this part is very important. If you do not do that, you're not going to be able to open an email. So the verification I, code I got is G398231. You can see that G is already there, so I'm just going to enter 398231. And if I click verify, then it's going to verify. Now, I see that another option that call instead, you can use that option as well. It doesn't matter, but text is what I'm using right now. So verify. Okay, so it looks like we have an email address and just to be sure I'm just going to you know copy this email address and put it on my notepad so when I need to delete that I'll just delete that and so it's just telling you congratulations you have your email address now which is my first email 533 at gmail.com now it's saying that Google will use this number only for account security and here uh, this number will be visible to others uh, and you can choose later whether to use it for other purposes that's fine now recover email address this is kind of optional but I suggest you to do that what it is that you know if you lose your password or email so here we have the recovery email address uh, what it is that you have to enter an email address uh, and if you lose your email and or password then Google will you know Send you the information here uh, This is I strongly recommend you do that and even if you do not have another email what you can do you can ask your friend or relatives to share their uh, You know email if it's uh, someone you can trust because Google is going to send you the recovery uh, email or password into that email. So this one, it can be your spouse or friend or partners or someone, you know, very close and you can use their email. And or if you have other email, if you can, you can enter it here too. But if you don't want that, then you can just leave it. This is totally optional. So now it's asking you to enter a date of birth. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to enter like a fake uh, date of birth. So let's say February... Uh, one 1900 and gender uh, I'm not sure these are optional or not uh, but looks like they they are like you know I uh, have to enter them uh, and it says that why we ask for this information so looks like we are done here so I'll just click next and get more from your number so if you like you can uh, add your phone number to your account for use across Google services so this is just you know you can add the same phone num number you provided for your google account so you can actually uh, you know opt in uh, or you have the option to uh, not but i'll just like you know let's say we'll opt in so what happens that it links all your google stuff with the same number for security 
uh, and for video message and calls or other Google services. So that's a nice option. So you can just, you know, uh, click yes, I'm in. Now we're going to have to go through some privacy and you can just like, you know, read them if you would like. But usually most of us, uh, you know, most people, I think they just click on agree. So now here you have your first email. So you can see that this is your primary inbox and this is your social inbox. So what it means that, you know, here you're going to get your emails from like, you know, let, let's say Facebook or Instagram. And here we have promotions. So let's say like, you know, if like in you know, marketing or other things, they're asking to buy something, then here you're going to get it. Uh, you can actually merge them into one or you can keep them separated. My understanding is that it's easier to have just one inbox instead of like, you know, three separated tabs and you can add or remove tabs, click inbox settings. So let's do that. So you're going to click on inbox settings and it's just giving you how to remove that. So what you can do, you can just remove social promotion and then save. And you can see that, you know, now those uh, tabs are gone. So you have one main inbox and Google just sent you a kind of like, you know, uh, congratulations uh, email. And here is your first email. Now, it says the dynamic email. Parts of this email are dynamic and can collect and show up to date information. So it just gives you a message of what type of email are they. And uh, what's going to happen here, if you take a look on the left so this is your like you know panel and here you're going to see other stuff for example inbox sent uh, draft and more so the sent is going to show all the email you're going to be sending so let's create an email here and I'm going to just send we can just send to this email address so for example let's click here it's kind of like you know I'm sending it to myself and we can say test and you can even say hello doesn't hurt and send and you can see that you got your own email which is right here now this email because you sent it from this mail uh, email address is going to be under the send box which is going to be let's find that right here sent and it's going to show you all the emails you're sending now here you have a folder called spam and this is going to be you know all the spam emails are going to be caught and stay here and it will give you the option to delete them but if you don't delete them manually then system is going to delete them every 30 days so you can just you know keep an eye on this in this folder sometimes uh, you can just check once in a while which I do because sometimes uh, good emails get caught as spam uh, so you might want to just keep an eye here and then here uh, you have some important emails. So this is kind of just uh, like you know Google, uh, whatever email Google thinks is important, it's going to show you here. And here, this is going to show you any draft email. Let's say email you started writing but you haven't sent it yet. So those are going to show up here. And another feature you have here, all mail. So this is going to show you all your emails, even if you archive something. So for example, let's go back to inbox. So now let's say this is your email. I'd like to archive this email. It's kind of like, you know, saving your email. So it doesn't show up in the inbox. So if you want to archive email, then you can choose one or multiple. And then if you hit archive, then this is going to take that email to that all email section where all email appears. So for example, this is that archive email. The way you can tell this is archived because it doesn't have any label or folder attached to it. For example, here you can see inbox and here you don't see any folder attached to it. So that means that this is archived email. So now I'm going to show you how you can create label labels or folder. So to kind of organize your email. So if you click on one email uh, or if you actually can go inside that email by clicking on it, either way it works. So let's say we click that email. And here you see that there's labels. So if you click on it, then you can create labels. So I'm going to say that this is kind of personal just to create a label. And if you 
click here create new then you can see that you know it's giving you another message and create and then it's going to put that label or that email under personal so here you're going to see that there is a like in a folder or label or tab which is personal so that email is now going to be staying in personal folder so for example this email should be in that personal folder and the reason it has that white part kind of highlighted because you created a label and this is in your personal folder but the reason is still it's showing up in the inbox because you haven't archived it yet so if you click here and if you hit archive then this is going to disappear from your inbox and this is going to be go into now personal folder or you can access from all emails folder okay so now if you'd like to later let's say you have too many labels and if you'd like to manage them you can click here and you know you can manage all your labels so I'm not going to go into details because then the video is going to be like in a probably more than one hour which I don't want I want to keep anything simple so I'm, I'll just go over the basic stuff now let's uh, send ourselves another email uh, another email test and send an email so if you go to inbox so now you can see that you have the capability to add email to a task let's see here a doctor's appointment or dentist or something and you'd like to save that email as a task or add that email to your task then you can just choose that email and click here then this is going to be added to your task list which is going to be showing on the right column and here you can even do more stuff by going through this so for example let's say you know you can rename it you can sort it out and you can do it as a reminder so you have a variety of option uh, so you can just like you know that's something I wanted to show you and here you can see that you have an option to go to your calendar so it's loading your calendar and then it's taking a few seconds so I'll just you know click it exit uh, but it's going to load your calendar and here this is kind of Google's note taking system it's called keep notes and you can like you know add notes and anything so this is a very handy feature and actually I use uh, Google keep a lot to create notes and then here you can add a task manually and then here you can add contacts for example your friends or anyone uh, to your list and it's going to be a lot easier to send them email now here you have more options here you can actually create a meeting or join a meeting uh, so via Google uh, Google's you know uh, meeting uh, app which is meet.google.com and you have to just like you know give them this link and you can send them invite and start now and then you can use Google Hangouts which is like a kind of chat service and then let's see what we have here so we have here kind of create new level so instead of creating a level from your email you can actually create a level before to organize your email just from here and then the other thing at is here that we have an option to start an email so let's see if you think this is an important email and you'd like to start it so you can just click here then it's going to create a start and if you remove that you just click it again that's going to remove it and also you can create a star from here so that's going to be another way you can you know uh, add a star and you can add like you know multiple star if you just click uh, more than one you can just click one by one now here you can sort out your email by all none read unread or start unstart so if you have like you know hundreds of or thousands of emails then this is a good way you can like you know, sort them out and let's say you received an email and you think this is a spam and you can just mark that email as a spam email by clicking here and also if you'd like to delete that email you can do that just by deleting clicking here 
and also if you already read an email but you'd like to mark that email not read then you can just you know click it and then you see that it looks like it not it's not read yet so there are lots of options here and you can do these from staying in the inbox or you can do the same thing when you click on that email and go to that individual email and if you'd like to compose an email then you just hit this like you know huge button compose and then you have to type in the email address you're sending it to and then you can uh, let's say we are sending it ourselves then you can subject uh, hello or hi and we will just say how are you so you can see that I just pressed or wrote Y and it's giving an option U because it's just the AI is trying to predict what you're trying to write. So if you do not want to write the whole thing, all you have to do is press tab. Let's do that. And you can see that, you know, it's completing that word for you. So that's a very good option. And this is called Smart Compose. So it's just suggest you to save time. Uh, so we're going to keep it. Now, once you finish writing an email, you can send click here to send that email so it's going to send the email right away and if you click here it looks like there are other options and you can actually schedule to send so you can send like you know uh, at a later date or later time and you can choose custom you know date and time which is here and then another option when you click send then you have a few seconds to stop that email so let's say I'm, I hit send and here you can see that undo button so if you just click here that means that that email was not sent uh, I think I was too late to click the undo uh, let me just take a look here yeah unfortunately I was too late but if you just you know hit that undo button then it's going to send that email uh, let's compose another email because I didn't show you something some other stuff okay so now here you can choose to you know change your formatting options if you click here you you're going to see this you know bar and here you can kind of like you know highlight bold you know uh, use the underline italic all, all these options you have numbered list points so you have many more options here just by clicking this button and then if you'd like to attach a file then you can just click here it could be at like in you know, a picture PDF file and it's going to just like you know show any files and anything so for example we're going to just attach this Niagara Falls tour and you can see that you know it attached that file and if you'd like to remove that then you can just click here and it's going to remove attachment now here you can you have the option to insert like you know emoji and other stuff so you can just click here like that and if you like to delete it just highlight and enter delete and here you have the option to insert files from Google Drive uh, if you have Google Drive then you can use this to attach files and then here you can insert photo so you can insert photo like you know from your own photos or you can just insert from like you know URL address uh, here so for example let's type in my own website ahmeddon.com and see if it can find something so it looks like it's asking you to enter HTTP before so let's do that uh, okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to it's not working with W so it has to be this way HTTP colon backslash backslash okay so now okay looks like it's saying that we cannot find that access the image we cannot find or access the image so somehow it looks like the images like you know are blocked on my website you cannot access them but this is how you can access image and if you'd like to upload from your computer then here you can choose the upload and then this is going to you know uh, choose any photo you'd like to send so this is just my YouTube video thumbnail which I created and it added that video and now toggle to confidential mode 
Okay, so I haven't actually tried this before and even I didn't know today is the first time I'm you know finding this out with you. So basically if you choose this option you can make an email expire within a week within like you know one day or you can choose I believe other custom date. Uh, let me see looks like you no know, the least you can do is one day and require passcode so you can you know email proof your uh, pass uh, pass code proof your email uh, by SMS passcode or no SMS pass passcode so there's lots of different options this option actually I'm learning some of this stuff new and this is the email signature so I'll just you know delete this picture so it, we have some space so email signature is what that you can create a custom signature for example today is a good day or if you have a business or if you have uh, if you'd like to give out your like you know website or YouTube channel then you can uh, create custom so let's say I create the when there and it took me to manage signature and then here uh, there should be a space to manage signature okay so which is going to be right here you can see it so basically just took you to the settings and you have to set up a new signature so name the new signature let's say my YouTube my YouTube channel and if you hit create I'm going to have to minimize this just to show you a little bit better and here you can you know save your message inside that signature name so let's say for my YouTube channel please visit my channel YouTube okay so this is my YouTube address so I'm going to save this and I don't see any place to save here uh, but I think it's going to be saved automatically that's what it looks like to me okay yeah, I don't see any save button but I have a feeling that you're going to save this just by clicking save here which is going to be let's see there has to be a save option somewhere here so if you click save changes then that signature should be active now now let's take this out uh, and go back to signature if you take a look here signature default so it says that for new email use no signature so the reason the defaulted to no signature it, it didn't let me you know insert any signature so what happens you have to just switch it to the signature and you can also add signature on your reply so here is my default signature and I didn't choose to signature add signature on reply so I'm just going to save this and now see what happens so you click here okay so it looks like it still it didn't you know work so I'm just going to you know click here and we'll just go back to the draft I think it has to refresh that's why it's not working yet okay now you can see that you have that option my YouTube channel and if you just click here it's adding that message so that's what signature is and here is how you're adding signature now you can you'll see that there are three dots and it has more options so you can add like you know labels plain text mode print check spelling and smart compass feedback so you can add all these so some of the features I even didn't know by myself but you know I found out when I was showing you how to create an email which is a good thing uh, and I think that's the basics of everything and I don't think there's anything to show you for now but you know once you start using that then you're going to find out more and more and also I have other gmail tutorial which you can you know uh, view in this playlist which I'll put it in the description box below before I go just one more thing to show if you'd like to search your email you can just do a search right here for example if you just enter how 
and you can see that it's giving you the result and if you'd like to uh, broaden the search or filter the search then you can use these parameters uh, to from you know uh, date attachment without attachment so you can search this way so that's another very handy feature when you're gonna have like in you know, thousands of emails and you'd like to find one specific email or several emails that's how you search your email so that's all for the gmail tutorial thank you for watching this video there'll be more videos coming up so i'll see you shortly thank you